abduction is no longer just a story created in our science fiction. More and more psychiatric professionals refuse to discount the tales they hear from victims describing hostile encounters with aliens. The details of most abductees are striking in their similarity. I mean, this is terror. You're being kidnapped. You don't know what's going to happen. I thought, this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die of a heart attack or something because it was not human. Transported to an alien craft, some report being subjected to horrific experiments and invasive probes. I hate what they do to me. I hate what they do to my mind. I hate what they do to my body. And it was not a fun experience. This is not something I would wish on anybody. But are the aggressive tactics that accompany most UFO encounters drowning out a more important message? There have been polls conducted, Gallup polls, uh, one poll called the Roper poll, and the results were extrapolated and sent to over 150,000 American GPs, medical practitioners. Uh, they basically said it's almost at epidemic proportions. They estimate that up to 4 million Americans may have had an alien abduction experience, as they believe. And then you've really got to wonder, why is, it, why is the nature of it so deceptive? You know, if they're really here to help us, as some of these contacts claim, you know, why do they go around acting deceptively? Why do they stealthily abduct people in the middle of the night? And, you know, when I say it was confronting, there was some subject matter that was particularly disturbing. You know, people claim they've been taken onto a spaceship and probed in all parts of their bodies. There are sexual encounters. There seems to be some sort of almost ritual abuse that's going on. So you've got to ask, why would advanced, you know, evolved creatures, you know, kidnap people in the middle of the night? and do these horrible things to them and yet, yet say, you know, we're here to help you evolve. And it's interesting that, you know, we'd like to apply, if you like, a scientific tag to it. But quite simply, it seems that these creatures claim that they fly millions of light years across the universe to basically deny the Bible, Christianity and, and teach us almost new age beliefs. I am from Venus. I don't think anybody's going to believe that uh, you or anybody else could be from Venus. Could you explain to us how you could be when everybody knows it's uninhabitable? They think it's uninhabitable because it is not inhabitable by physical life forms. We have bodies of light. While Leah rambles on with fantastical ideas, she soon compels the audience toward global unity, a message found throughout the New Age movement. And what occurs here on this planet will affect the rest of the universe. Can you, with all of your different ideas, all of your different races, come together as one planet and one people? We have dedicated millennia upon millennia to this idea. The earlier experiments with Pan and Lemuria and Atlantis were not successful. But this one will be. Why would extraterrestrials fly millions of light years to deny Christianity, support the occult, and lie about things that we know are true? Why would they purposely deceive their contacts? That in the old days they were from Mars, Jupiter. Well, we've been there and tested and looked and no ancient civil no alien races on those planets. So now they're from further off when we can't test their claims. But there's a fundamental problem with that. If they're from Sirius, Zeta Reticuli, or the Pleiades, and they're all claiming they're humankind's creators, they can't all be right. They can't all be telling the truth. So either there's only two possibilities. They're all wrong, or only one of them is correct. But if one of, only one of them is correct, that means everybody else is lying. So how do, you, how do you discern which one's telling the truth or not? I mean, just on the premise of logic, it gets very, very suspect. One of the ways you can start to get people to doubt is the things that they have shown you know as, as you saw in the movie all of these secular researchers saying they're deceptive they lie to people they're deceptive they lie to people but people never questioned it during the experience certainly after when you say were well, you told this were well, you told this and they go yeah i said but that's not true and that's not true doesn't that make you a bit suspicious i've met literally hundreds of people who've had this one and that they're lying in bed and they see a black cloud or entity in the room and it moves or hovers and they lose control of their voice and they're paralyzed. The skeptics try to, you know, explain it away as sleep paralysis. Um, and people 
call on the name of Jesus, for example, and even something like that uh, stops. And I myself had that same experience. And I haven't told many people this as a baby Christian. I think I'd been saved a matter of days. I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. And I'm lying in my room and I had this experience, but I was so excited about my newfound faith, I managed to squeeze the words out, Jesus, help me. And I was being pressed against the bed and choked and it stopped in an instant. We have testimony after testimony after testimony. And Guy Malone, a researcher in Roswell, New Mexico, he says, well, think about it. If these really are advanced entities flying millions of years across space with that type of technology, why would they be frightened of the name of Jesus? A supposedly deceased religious figure. Joe Jordan, who's catalogued over 400 cases now, uh, has uh, recently, if you like, been promoted. He lives in South Korea as the national director for MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, the world's largest UFO investigative group. He, as a non believer, first stumbled upon this. And he said, So, what is it about Christians that aliens don't like? And that was what he thought. Uh, and then he realized, like all other researchers who've come to study it, and if they're open enough to, to take the evidence for what it was, they realize they're not dealing with aliens, they're dealing with spirit beings. And he said he came to understand that the Bible was the only thing that it could explain the spirit realm ad adequately. Only permanent solution is the authority of the creator. Because if we are talking about fallen angels, deceptive spirit beings, who created them? You know, the creator of the universe created, created everything. He's the only one that obviously can have authority over those beings. We're all looking for meaning and purpose in this world. And if, you know, if, a, if an alien's traveled millions of light years across the universe, and, and I'm not making light of this, but he's come into your room and he says, and I've chosen you. I love